My parents met on the battlefield of Washington Square Park, 1992. On the ground, and my mother is there. She is dreadlocks and rap skirts, loud prints, indigenous symbols of love, power, and peace. Yes, she is Sistra. A ganja breath, conga drum step done barefoot, always barefoot, for she believes that her prayers, which manifest in alphabet city, swirl and then swell between her breasts and seep out through her feet to reach that great mother earth who lies beneath these city streets. And my father is there. He is worn out sambas, feet calloused from keeping his rhythm while drumming into sheepskins the beats of other people's ancestors. He hears their ancient cries across time, and he knows they like to dance. A merengue, a bachata, a salsa, a rumba, he calls on Africa and asks her to lend him her song. He plays her djembe, her dumbek, her tumbao. Yemaya, oloku, oloku, yemaya. Yemaya, mother of water, orisha of oceans. It is this goddess that forms before him in swift, lucid motions, her feet bare, pounding her pulse into the earth, her limbs swim to the beat of his song, her sarong, it hangs loose around her hips, which sway in time with his fingertips. And so they named me, this child of this fairy tale, this product, of something I cannot live up to, these legends that have been borrowed and tested and told again and again and again as bedtime stories. the word quadroon. <laughs> um, it's a word that was used um, in the one drop rule here in America to talk about um, the, the racial, the designation of race. Um, so basically, if you were half black, half white, you were a mulatto. And if you were a quarter black and half white, um, you were a quadroon. And if you're just one eighth black, you're an octoroon. Um, and so this way, um, this, the, the country was still able to sort of track all the black people and where we were going and who we were getting married with. So um, I first heard this word in high school um, and it actually applies to my heritage. Um, and I wrote this poem and it was published in my school literary magazine. So this is not my book, but it looks really cool. <laughs> so, um, and this is called Quadroon Girl. I've been scribbling early morning resolutions on my displaced skin. Been running out of gas so fast, paycheck can't keep up these days. These days, I've been longing my mystic roots. Named by illusion, move me to Africa house and maybe I won't rot. Hand me your heavy hips and maybe I'll hum you a few double-edged hymns. Yeah. workshop class who I never spoke to when you said we should hang out sometime I said yeah cool what I meant was I want us to fuck like a sickness and make love like it's cure <laughs> <laughs> Um, another, another little ditty about love. Uh, not quite as, uh... <clears throat> In your face. Right, this is more of the aftermath. Um, every one of your apologies, uh, every one of your kisses tasted like an apology. Oil wells in your cheeks. I'm still digging for reasons why I loved you relentless. I would apologize for that, but my girlfriends keep telling me I don't owe you anything. Our bodies were aura in hunger. 
I ate partial truths like I was a paying customer. We were all sugar water and butter cut coating my tongue, darling. As of late, I have been scraping my mouth out with a popsicle stick, collecting samples to send to the men who deal in, fix, in facts, not fictions. Even those white-coated scientist angels can't say why it is I love in ruins. I've run out of resurrection. Not even worth reconstruction. Maybe if I carve out the bedrock, tap into the logic that I lost inside myself when you held me, maybe then I could tell you if it was worth it. I could sift through the silt of my foundation and tell you the value of something like reason, which doesn't work the moment you need it the most. It's sad to say that I needed you. It's sad to say regret. It's sad to say bittersweet. It's sad to say that I still miss you. Oil wells in your cheeks. You could call this an apology because I'm sorry that I couldn't make myself lovely. You could call this an apology because I'm sorry you couldn't make yourself love me. I'm sorry that you didn't even try. You could call this an apology, but I don't owe you anything. I know that now. Yeah. Rock on, girl. Um, oh, this next, so I do slam poetry, which is a little bit different. I don't know if anyone here has encountered it, probably a lot. Okay, cool. Um, so this is a little bit more slammy. It's also a little bit about love. In Miss Wright's American history class, there's a boy in the back. He is a boogie down Bronx Brown milk in coffee color, with two slave ship sails for ears and 400 years of bondage kept on his belt, weighing him down with every step. He can't seem to keep his pants up too well as he tries to buy the gold chain dreams that the white men sell, dear black boy. There is a rhythm in these streets that only your oceans can sing. It's a touch and go kind of doo-wop. It's the ping of the hoop when you shoot. It's a freedom you can taste on the tip of your tongue. It's the saffron-skinned beauty whose home is up in Harlem. Watch her swing her hips to your tune. Her giggles ripple down river, bouncing against those delta blues. Yes, brown girl sits across from you in the classroom. And she glistens like a cool glass of brown sugar lemonade in June, down south where the breadcrumb trails of folk tales lead to plantation porches. Yes, she is a sweet vanilla sort of beautiful, who wants to tell the boy back home with eyes sapphire blue that she likes the way his ivory hands move when he talks about the Bible. But she was never thin-hipped or pink-lipped enough to be lady or lovely. See, she was always just pretty for a black girl. And you don't know it yet. But last night she dreamt that her baby brother, who's got the eyes of a thousand galaxies bursting beyond the clearest night sky you can imagine, came home from the third grade to say, Maya, I'm not white and I'm not black, I just am. But the teachers at school keep thinking I'm Mexican, maybe I should just learn Spanish. Ten. <laughs> Ten can be such a truthful age, can't it? So when she smiles at you, as the clock ticks three-fifths past the hour of emancipation, know that if you let her, she will be there the day they hip-hop harden the pulse out of you. When that day comes, she will breathe her life into your slave ship sails and whisper voice as high and smooth as a whistle and say, there, there lies my king. And what a privilege it has been to love him. So dear black boy, when they silver spoon feed you golden gilded legends of parks filled with roses, composed from the symphony of a king's dream, you thank them for their time, but don't let them rewrite your history.
Give them more. Do it quickly. Can't get enough. Um, okay, so um, my very, something very complicated just happened in my family pretty recently. Um, my mother and father uh, split up. They're not yet divorced, but they recently split, separated. And my mother very quickly got into a relationship with a man in Jamaica, which means that she is now living half the year in Jamaica. And this is very, very hard on my household of six. Um, to lose, uh, to lose her across the island. Um, so this poem is called Motherland. Sorry to get so serious. Motherland. She, a dead mango seed, a burnt redemption song. He got that slave ship love, skin chalk in a sea sunset siren of maroon speak. Call him fish belly white. Call me the two-faced one, daughter of the Red Sea, sister to the Mississippi, a twisted mother tongue. I'll be an uprising when home splits and splinters like sugarcane into dust. 